find me looking for you all through the night all through the day in this journey i'm on you're all i want all i Thank you for joining us today on The Journey. I'm Robin Durham, and Gabrielle Delgado is with us in the studio. She's been uh, my friend and ministry partner for 30 years, Many probably. Years, yes. And I'm grateful that you're here. And I'm so grateful to be here with you. Amen. We started last week with me sharing just some things that I've been hearing since probably uh, the Jewish, when the Jewish calendar changed, and even a little bit before. Uh, the, the Hebrew calendar changes in October, and some of these things I did hear before, but right around the October time frame, I always hear every year. Mm -hmm. I don't really intend to. It's just all of a sudden I'm hearing some things that I know are for the next year, and I actually go check the calendar, and it's usually right at right that now. time. Mm -hmm. But um, I shared last week, and I want you to go to the KPLE uh, website and, and take a look at the journey uh, just one week before today. And I shared that uh, a while back uh, in, a, in a time with the Lord in the morning, even before the sun came up actually, he began to download some RE words. And I'm not gonna go into great depth in that message again, but those words were restoration, recompense, reward, restitution, repayment, recover, redemption, refreshing, rejuvenation, resurrection. I shared with Gabrielle and Peggy on the way to work that day because we pray every day on the way in. And um, months later, August 29th, the Lord quickened to me to go to the internet. And a prophetess named Lana Vosser, uh, it caught my eye and I opened it up and listened to her and she said, her message was, it's time for the release of the RE's. She had restore, renew, rejuvenate, recompense, revelation, repayment, restoration, recovery, replacement, reward, remuneration, redirect, resurrect, redefined. She said the overarching word was repayment. So I just want to say to you, we are in a good season. Yes. We're in a season of recovering. And I have had to remind myself of that because old mindsets and the way we've always thought will keep us trapped yes. in an old place. That's so true. You know, there's an old adage or an old story about a panther that had like a six foot by maybe 18 foot cage and he paced one way and he'd turn and he'd pace another way and he'd turn and he'd pace another way. He, he was caged for years. When they removed that cage, he remained. I don't know how many years he was caged, but it's a good picture. Yeah, and I yeah. don't even know if it's a true story, mm -hmm. but it's, a, it's an illustration of how God can say the season has changed and we can miss it. And I wanna tell you, I'll just personally tell you, that um, I have had a lot of loss in my life in the area of relationship. And I, you know, I'm just gonna be real vulnerable today. Really hadn't planned on it, but I know the Lord's leading that way. Um, you know, just as a child, uh, there was a loss of parents and it, it was a loss to alcohol and it was a loss to drug addiction. It wasn't a loss to death, but they were gone. Mm -hmm. truly as far as. And I think sometimes it's worse because, you know, if a person is dead, you, you, you know they're not there, but when they are here and they're not here, yes, that's the hard part. Yes, ma'am. And I do want to say that was all restored Praise before God. my parents went to be with Jesus. And Praise I was God. saved. I wasn't saved when I was little. I was saved, at, you know, at 27 and relationships were restored. So mm -hmm. God is good. But I had fear of loss big time in my life. And it had followed me through adulthood even as I've been a saved woman for a long time. I had one child that um, left home and I really just lost her 
for a period of time. That's all been restored. God. You know, these things happen to yes. the saints. Yes. These things happen to ministers. Right. I can't tell you how many people I've ministered to out of the pain yes. that I'd been through. But I had a daughter lost for a season that I had very little contact with. So there was a fear. She had a six week old baby when she left. So there was a fear for the grandchildren. Yes. And a fear was she taking care of the mm -hmm. grandchild. Again, been restored, amazingly nice been restored. But I had a fear of loss. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how subtle it was until God gave these words of restoration mm -hmm. and that it was a season of a releasing of the RE's and a situation would rise up where fear would rise up in me and I would hear the Lord say, Robin, it's not a season of loss, it's a season of recovery. God. And God has so ministered, this has been this year. I shared last week that, that 33 years ago, I've been saved 35, that God promised that he was going to restore some things in my life. And through the 33 years since that promise, he has progressively healed me, but he is doing major work in these last few years. And he is to those that I'm talking to that are willing to be honest yes. and willing to be yes. vulnerable enough to say, even as leaders and ministers, yes. God is still working yes. in my life. I think especially, you know, I think that's where sometimes people do get discouraged that they think they are the only ones yes, that are going through that. You know, of course, you're not going to share everything no. because we don't uncover somebody else's nakedness, you know, their it, sin. it says mm -hmm. their, their sin, Yes, you know, but yet we, we do need to be, like you said, that transparent where people can see, oh, I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. I know when I was younger and uh, I wasn't careful sometimes about sharing some things I shared, mm -hmm. I always meant that to be sharing them for good, but the Lord really cautioned me, yes. just as you said, Gabrielle, and now I really sh share th things mostly one-on-one -on -one, and sometimes if I really right. feel that of the Lord yes. and I protect the people that Same I share here. about, yes. you know, and, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, great wisdom right there. Yes. Um, I also want to say right about the October time frame, the turn of the year, I heard clearly the Lord say, your enemies will be bred for you. And I shared that with my yes. friends. <laughs> and then I want to say maybe two weeks, three weeks later, uh, I was just about to wake up. I don't know if any of you have this happen, but boy, does the Lord speak to me just in that state of waking up. Speaks to me in dreams, speaks to me sometimes in many ways. But as I was waking, oh, loudly, I heard him say, it's time to take the land. God. And so those two things so fit together. Your enemies will be bred for you is Numbers 14, 9. Let's turn there. And of course, you know, it's when it was time to take the land is out of the book of mm -hmm. Joshua. But I want us to start in Numbers today, in Numbers 14 in verse 9, and just read that. And then we're going to do a quick review of where they were in the book of Numbers. And then we'll see how far we get to move. But God is wanting to do a work of restoration. Yes. He wants us to know it's a season of recovery and not loss. Yes. He wants us to go in and take the land. And he wants us to know that those, those enemies will now be bred for yes. us. So Numbers 14.9 says, and you know um, this was right after they had gone in and they checked out the fruit of the land and we'll read that in a minute. And then they were just whining and complaining again. They could not believe yeah. God. They yeah. had been in bondage in Egypt so long like that panther pacing in that Back cage that yes. though God had brought them out, they could not believe he could take them in. Yes. You know, they wanted so to go back. They wanted to go back. <laughs> they wanted but to I go feel back. that we're right on that pivotal moment, moment of him saying, it is one of those moments again in time. Yes. So uh, nine says, and this is uh, Joshua. I want to go back up to six actually. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jeth Hunnath which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto the, all the company of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, 
then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So I would say old enemies, and I shared my testimony just now. That's just one of some old enemies. Uh, old enemies that have, let's just use the word, plagued you for years. Yes. God says, those enemies are going to be bred for you now. This is going to be a year of you conquering, a year of restoring what the canker worm has stolen. Even Joseph had such a season at the hands of man, at the hands of his brothers. Yes. There came a time that he could look at them and say, what you meant for evil, God has used for good yes. because he sent me ahead of you for your salvation. Yes. So many of you have suffered some things because you're going to be that key or pivotal person in your family. Yes. And you have been persecuted even because you were the first one that was saved, yes. possibly in your family. And so I just want to encourage you, though it's been long and though it has been hard, God is saying, trust me, believe yes. me. Don't be like Israel. Yes. Yes. I brought, I saved you. I saved you. I brought you out. I can certainly conquer these things that have been yes. your enemies forever. And you know, and one of the things that I think uh, can define enemies in, in that too is not to listen to negativity of other people. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, you know, that, that the Job's friends, you know, that uh, meant well, but only speak negative and, and really help us to stay back. True. Rather than to go forward. So, you know, True. surround ourselves. We need to surround ourselves with people that will speak the same thing, that will encourage us, even though it is hard Amen. times. And it would have been good for those 12 spies if there had been more than just two. Joshua and Caleb did believe yes. they were the ones that eventually went in. The rest of them all died. And that's such a good yes. point, Gabrielle, because you will have friends that won't go along with you. You will have relatives, family members that won't go along with you where God wants to right. take you. And you know, that's why uh, Joshua had to speak to them like that, not to fear, because hearing the 10 spies, everybody that put fear, that on, put them. fear on them, Yes, ma'am. you know, so it is so, so important. It is. Wow. That's a really good point. I don't want us to go all the way back to Numbers 10, but I want to tell you in Numbers 10, God formed some trumpets. He had uh, metalsmiths form some trumpets and he had the trumpets blown and he said, it's time to move the camp. Yes. And I, I so strongly sense that it's time for the camp to move. In Numbers 11, and, and this is just typical, and as Gabrielle said, we have to watch our mouths and watch what we're listening to. The people complained and it <laughs> displeased the yeah. Lord. And his anger was kindled, it says, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Okay, those that weren't moving were consumed, mm -hmm. okay? I'm telling you, this is a word. Yes. God is saying, I wanna move you this year. Robin, I wanna move you this year and don't lag behind, move with me, yeah. believe me, trust me, because we'll be consumed. Yes. Instead of our enemies being bred for us, we'll be consumed yes. by our enemies. Yes. And consumed with fear yes. and, and you know, defeat and eaten up with that, yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, I, and then I want us to jump right on to Numbers 12. Miriam and Aaron yeah. speak against Moses. Moses is trying to move the camp. Joshua and Caleb are buying in. You know, there is a portion of the people that are buying in. And then all of a sudden you have his brother and sister rise up and say, we hear God too, mm -hmm. you know, basically. Mm -hmm. And so what happens? Leprosy. And the camp is delayed. Yep. So sometimes it's and, family. <laughs> yeah, and God wants to consume the whole group. And Moses said, oh, yes. don't do it. Because then the testimony will be he could bring them out, but he couldn't take yes. them in. And we want God's honor. Yes. That's a way to look at this thing. Yes. I've really come to look at um, believing God 
as honoring God yes. and defending his honor. Yes. Because we can say, and Christians do all the time, God said, God mm -hmm. said, God said. And then the world and half the church never sees a change. Yes. And it does do damage yes. to the Lord's reputation. Yeah. And you know, and that's how I try to live my life. You know, that uh, I remember a time, Robin, then uh, where uh, I considered suicide. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had been a Christian spirit filled for a long time yes, already, but things just got so hard. And, and you know, yes, that, and what really what stopped me was that. I will not have them say he could not keep her. My goodness. You know, and that, that, that's what I said. And, and, you know, because everything we do, people are watching us. You may not think they are, but people are watching. They may not say it even, mm -hmm. but they, they are watching us mm -hmm. and they want to see Jesus in us. They, they want to see it. They want to see victory because they look around and the world is, is full of defeat. Yes, you know, so we're the one, that, that's the, the light that we're supposed to be. Amen, that's a powerful testimony, Gabrielle. Um, I want us to look at Numbers 13. And I wanna read, I don't know how much of it, because it, there's just something in it. And it says, and the Lord sp spoke unto Moses saying, send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. So he was sending leaders. He mm -hmm. was sending rulers, people with authority in. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. And of these were their names, of the tribe of Reuben, S-H-A-M-M-U-A, -M -M Shemua, the son of Zachar. And I'm not gonna read all of them, but I wanted to, to know that of, it says of the tribe of Simeon, Shaphtat, the son of Hori, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jehunath. So Caleb was from the tribe of Judah, which means praise. Yes. We've been talking about honoring God, the words of our mouth and what we listen to. Of the tribe of Issachar, Igiah, the son of Joseph, of the tribe of Ephraim, Osea or Joshua, the son of Nun. Ephraim's tribe meant double fruitfulness. Yes. And those were the two. And all the other tribes are listed. Mm -hmm. But Caleb from the tribe of praise and Joshua from the tribe whose name meant double fruitfulness were the two that were able to believe God. And I believe again that speaks to the season that we're in. It is going to be a time where God is praised yes. and it's going to be a time of reward, even yes. double reward of yes. so many things. We will see double fruitfulness. Yes. We will have to stay in a place. And as I shared, I believe it was um, maybe in the last program, might've been this one, I can't remember, but that God, uh, one morning I was talking to him and thinking about how long it had been on some of the promises. And, and I don't think I was whining. I think I was just thinking about it. And the Lord cracked through and gave me a revelation of his patience yes. and his uh, love for me mm -hmm. and how he has longed for all of these years yes. for me to get freedom in some yes. areas. So, you know, God longs for us to do that. So I'm not going to read any more of that, uh, but I think I will read uh, verse 33 which is the last uh, verse. Well, let's just go back. But the men, Caleb stilled the people in verse 30, 30 of Numbers 13 before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we're well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we will not be able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth the inhabitants thereof. That was just exaggeration. Yes. Okay, they went down a bad road of unbelief, and then they convinced themselves mm -hmm. of even worse things. Yep. And all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. That was true. 
the sons of Anak were there yes. and they were giants. They were giants. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So were we in their sight. And you know, that's a uh, presumption. Yes. You know, they didn't know what the people of that land thought of right. them. And but really their mindset, you know, is. their mindset was, you see it, it in their own sight, that's how they see themselves. How do we see ourselves? Yes, ma'am. Do we see ourselves as the world says, or maybe our parents even said, or siblings said, a teacher even said, mm -hmm. and we received that. Mm -hmm. But we need to, how does God see us? Yeah, that's yeah. who we really are. Amen. And what has God said? How did, yes. has God see us? Uh, that is so key. Yes. That is so key. Yes. Um, how, what, you know, and we have to believe, and I think that only comes through being in the Word mm -hmm. and knowing God and reading the Word and reading the Word yes. where he, he loves us and yes. His love is broken open and shown to us. And it is hard to convince yourself sometimes yeah. that you're of any value at all. Right. As you said, That's Gabrielle. why we have to take the Word. Yes, you know, ma'am. I remember a, a, a child being told, maybe by a father or by a mother, you will never amount to anything. Mm -hmm. It is not easy to come out of that, but with the grace of God mm -hmm. and with knowing our identity is in the Lord, yes, now we are new creatures in Christ. Mm -hmm. And we are who the Father, and the Father never called us a failure. Yes, amen. And we are in that place of being in a season, season of restoration. Yes. And he's wanting us to believe that. As yes. he said to me, Robin, you're not in a season of loss. Yes. You're in a season of yes. recovery. Yes. So Numbers 14, we had started out reading verses 6. Well, I'm going to start with one. And the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation and said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey, were it not better for us to return to Egypt? Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of, I of Israel. Verse 6, And Joshua the son of Nun, Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which uh, were of them that searched out the land, rent their clothes, spoke to the company of the children, saying, The land which we pass through is a good land. Verse 8, If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us in and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. The two things I heard the Lord say, Your enemies will be bread for you this year, and it's time for you to take the land. I'm excited. Yes. I'm excited. Yes. I know it's not going to be without challenge. Of course because it's a decision that you make to stop fearing yes. the things you, you know, I want instant deliverance. Yeah. You know, I, I want God to just do it for me. And he says, no, face it. Yes. No, walk through it. I'm with you. Walk through it. We'll walk yes. through it together. We grow through it. Yes, you know, ma'am. It's, 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 and you know what's so interesting in this, uh, Robin, when you think about it, this was after God had parted the Red Sea, yeah. and they walked through on dry land, saw their enemies perish in the flood when the waters came back together. Mm -hmm. You and know, so we need to rehearse and go back and not forget what God did for us in, in, in days, you know, because we can't forget when things get hard at a time. You know, we forget the past victories. Yeah, we do, and one of the things I shared um, last program was God did a huge miracle here at KPLE. Yes. Uh, financial miracle. Yes. And it was big and it was exaggerated. It was miraculous. It was yes. only God. Yes, a lot of people prayed. A lot of people prayed, but God moved. Yes, He moved. Because we had a person come off the street and said God told them to give a thousand dollars we'd never seen before. Hallelujah. We had two four hundred dollar ones same way. You know, it was miraculous. Yeah. And after that event, I said to the Lord, Father, help me never forget that yes. miracle. Don't yes. let me be yes. like those who saw the yes. miracle of the Red Sea yes. and then couldn't believe yes. you. And I have just really, that is so my heart right now yes. for this season, not just in the area of finances yes. for this station, which we could stand 
some donations from those of you that watch, so call in. <laughs> but in every area of my life where there has been struggle, where there's been uh, having to wait and having to believe, that miracle, mm -hmm. if God can do that, there are so many other yes. miracles. Yes. So I'm with you, Gabrielle. Yes. I'm like, Lord, and, and God's been good so far. Yes. I haven't passed out or had any panic <laughs> moments. But uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're in good shape. You Praise know, God. God's, God's trying to get us to a place of living in a place of peace and rest yes. and faith. I want to go ahead and try to finish this chapter. Um, it's interesting because again, it says the congregation wanted to stone Caleb and Joshua in verse 10. In verse 11, the Lord says to Moses, how long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I've shown among them? <laughs> I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians shall hear it, for you brought this people up out of Egypt, or out, out from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, are among the people. Interesting. The inhabitants of the land had already heard that God was among the people. So they probably didn't look at the Israelites like they were grasshoppers. Yep, right. So it says that, you know, that they, they'd heard of the Lord and what he'd done. That thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar in a cloud, and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, because the Lord was not able to bring the people into the land, which he swore unto them to give them, he has slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according to all thou hast spoken, saying, Moses believed. Moses yes pleaded for the people. And I thought this is good even in what I'd been sharing recently. The Lord is long suffering oh, and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations. We know as blood-bought believers in the new covenant that the blessings of God are to a thousand generations yes. to those who believe, and that salvation is to our seed and to our seed. Seed, I'm glad we live in the new covenant. So do Disobedience I. still warrants correction and sometimes consequences. Yes. But thank God we are where we are. We're going to pick this up next week again. I hope you're enjoying the study. Um, God is restoring us to glory. Yes. He's wanting us to believe him that this is a year of restoration. It's a year to take the land and that your enemies will be bred for you. Thank you for being with me, Gabrielle. Oh, you're so welcome, Robin. And thank you all for watching us on the journey.